Hi guys, and welcome back to some more Game of Thrones. I actually had a very helpful comment from Troublesome Birdsong on the last part of this, who was telling me that Asher's backstory profile regarding his exile was in the Codex menu, and they explained a little bit more about um, the Lost Legion and stuff like this, which was very, very helpful. And it's making me want to check the Codex just now because I haven't actually looked over the Codex yet. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off this episode, or this part I should say, reading the codex and I'll have an annotation and I'll link in the description box the time for you to skip forward and actually start the proper episode. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. So let us begin. Let me just get comfortable as I try to read this out. We've got Gregor Forrester, Lord of Ironrath. Lord Forrester was the Lord of Ironrath and a bannerman of House Stark. As a youth, he famously arm wrestled Galbert Glover for the privilege of becoming the Man Squire. Glover later joked that he'd gladly lose a match all over again. Gregor married Alyssa Branfield, a daughter of Southron Targaryen loyalists, before... Southron Targaryen? Loyalists? Does that make sense? Is that a character name? It probably is. Before Robert Baratheon seized the Iron Throne, Gregor ascended to the Lordship after his father died at the Trident and led House Forrester for 16 years until he was slain at the Twins. Lady Elissa Forrester, Lord Forrester's wife. Elissa Forrester was born to the House Branfield, a minor Southron house. So yeah, that must be right, Southron. <laughs> that was destroyed when the Targaryen dynasty fell. She had been married to Gregor for many years when Robert's rebellion signalled her family's demise, yet she nonetheless felt conflicted between her father's loyalties and her husband's. In time, Elissa came to feel that Ironrath was her true home, and she embraced her role as the Forrester matriarch. She has silently sworn that she'll never see her family destroyed again. Roderick Forrester, Firstborn Son Lord Forrester's eldest son, Roderick, was trained from an early age to shoulder the burdens of leadership. In truth, he was built for the role, strong, charismatic and formidable on the battlefield. When Rob Stark called his banners to war, Lord Forrester asked Roderick to stay behind and protect Ironrath, but Roderick would have none of it. Instead, he rode off at his father's side and led the Forrester cavalry with such valour that his name came to be feared amongst the ranks of Lannister soldiers. Roderick fell in battle at the Red Wedding and is presumed dead. Apologies if you heard my brother coughing in the background here. He's like pacing up and down outside the, the hall. Asher Forrester, exiled second son. Asher had always been a rebellious root. youth, brawling in taverns, sleeping with whores and finding ways to raise his father's ire. But his life took a dark turn when, at age 17, he fell in love with Gwyn Whitehill, the eldest daughter of his father's bitter rival. Bloodshed ensued and Lord Forrester faced a grim choice. Go to war or exile Asher across the narrow sea. He chose the latter. Asher remains in Essos to this day, living as a sellsword, trying not to think about the life he left behind. And then we have Mira Forrester, eldest daughter. Mira had always been fond of Ironrath, but Lady Forrester... Wanting her eldest daughter to learn the ways of a South Southron court, arranged for Mira to serve as a handmaiden to Marjorie Tyrell. To Mira's great surprise, she enjoyed attending on Marjorie at Highgarden and followed her to King's Landing with enthusiasm. Life in the capital has not been easy for Mira, as her straightforward northern ways are often at odds with the subtleties of court life. But she also has more guile than she realises. Ethan Forrester, third-born son, Whereas his older brothers were natural warriors, Ethan always found himself drawn to pursuits of the mind, particularly music and books. He also bore a great love for the towering trees of Ironrath, a love he shared with his twin sister, Talia. Excuse me while I take a drink. Ethan was just a boy when House Forrester joined the War of the Five Kings, but by war's end, he had been thrust into a role he was unprepared for. Sadly, his lordship did not last long, Ethan was murdered in cold blood by Ramsay Snow, the bastard son of Rhys Bolton. Talia Forrester, second-born daughter. During her fourth pregnancy, Lady Forrester dreamed she would birth a daughter with a voice like the summer rain. But as fate would have it, she gave birth to a boy. The infant Ethan wailed for hours, until Lady Forrester entered a second labour, this time birthing a girl. She named the girl Talia after her own mother, and from then on Ethan hardly ever cried. Her dream came true, for Talia has a lovely singing voice, though her tunes have all been sad ones since her twin brother's murder. Rion Forrester, or is it Rion? I can't remember. Fourth-born son. The last of the Forrester children. 
Ryan grew up idolising his older siblings and spent many an hour chasing Ethan and Talia through the grove. His youth has been pleasant and shielded from responsibility, but recently... <laughs> Rion's innocence... I'm just going to say every pronunciation of it so I get one right at least. Innocence has begun to fade. When the war begun, Ryan was too young to understand why Roderick and his father were leaving home, but the grim realities of a house at war have been impossible to avoid. And Rion is now being held hostage by House Whitehill. Jared Tuttle. Oh yeah, we've not heard from him in a while. Jared. Jared Tuttle. Gar is it Jared? Squire to Lord Forrester. Jared was raised on stories of heroism about the likes of Arthur Dane and Simeon Star Eyes. Though the son of a pig farmer, he has always aspired to one day become a warrior himself. With the help of his uncle, Duncan, who had risen from lowborn origins to become Castellan of Ironrath, Garrod found work in Lord Forrester's stables, rising through the ranks to eventually be named his squire. After the Red Wedding, Jared found his family murdered and took vengeance. He was subsequently sent to the wall. Duncan Tuttle, Castellan of Ironrath. As a boy, Duncan showed such talent for managing his family's farm that everyone assumed he'd one day take over. But Duncan was fated to run more than fields in the pig pen. In time, he struck up an unlikely friendship with Gregor Forrester, the heir to House Forrester. The two grew close, and when Gregor became lord, he named Duncan his castellan. Many eyebrows were raised, but Duncan proved himself worthy, and has served the house well in the long years since. Sir Royland de Gore, Ironrath's master at arms. Royland de Gore joined Lord Forrester's army after his family was wiped out by Ironborn during Balon Greyjoy's rebellion. De Gore had a natural grasp of military tactics and, tactics and strategy, and came to play a critical role in the Siege of Pike that ended the war. In the months that followed, King Robert awarded Royland a knighthood and Lord Forrester asked him to serve as Ironrath's master at arms. Sir Royland still holds a position and is known for his military expertise as well as his legendary temper. Master or Tengren, master to Ironrath. Originating from a minor house in the Vale, Meister or Tengren, <laughs> I can't see all these words, studied at the Citadel in the hope of being assigned to the Ivory, but by the time he'd earned enough links on his chain to graduate from Acolyte, John Arryn had been murdered and the South was in turmoil. The Citadel ultimately assigned Meister or Tengren to Ironrath, where he soon came to respect the Forester family's honour and integrity. He now serves the Foresters with pride and has become a trusted advisor to the Lord. I shall take another drink. I believe this is the last character though. Oh, no, there's still... Well, it is technically the last character, so I was right. Malcolm Branfield, Lady Forrester's brother. As a young man, Malcolm was a black sheep of the Branfield family. He liked to roam the countryside in the style of a hedge knight, refusing his father's offers of marriage and lands. Malcolm fought bravely alongside his brothers when House Branfield fell. Yet he and his sister were the only two survivors. In recent years, Malcolm has lived with Lady Elise's new family at Ironrath, and is the last of the Branfield line. He is currently across the narrow sea, hoping to bring Asher Forrester home from exile. And lastly, Ironrath, ancient seat of House Forrester, an imposing stronghold surrounded by towering ironwood, wood, ironwood trees. Ironrath marks the ancestral home of House Forrester. Built over 1,500 years ago by Cedric Forrester and his triplet sons, Ironrath is a testament to the strength and endurance of Ironwood itself. More than one visitor has called Ironrath the most striking keep in the north. Even Ned Stark was said to be envious. Ironrath sits on the edge of the largest ironwood forest in Westeros, which has proven to be the most to be a strategic advantage for the house. Wow, we're really struggling with those words. So let's dive in and play the actual episode now. Continue episode two. Hopefully that was interesting for you guys. It's certainly interesting for me to find out a little bit more about these characters. And it gives us a little more context too, which is always nice. Jared Tuttle, Castle Black. Oh, we're actually carrying a few things. I don't even remember that. Okay, let's look at Castle Black. Castle Black. So this is the seat of the Night's Watch. I forgot what his voice was like. Okay. Um, 
I feel like I'm just looking at the horse's arse. Well, I'm not now because I'm looking at the sky. The wall. Or the wall. Always wanted to see it, but not like this. It's a pretty sight, nonetheless. Recruits at the gate! Oh, who's a good horsey? Who's a good horsey? So here we are. Okay, so they're just practicing their fighting. Your arrival, is it? Another one for Frostfinger. On a horse, no less. Ouch. Excuse you. Looks like it was built by giants, doesn't it? You're new, here to take the black. Because mm. you got that look about you. Uh, yes. Aye, I am. Thought so. I'm new here myself. Frostfinger, he's the one you want. Handles all new recruits. Which Where is it? That grizzled old prune over there. Says us new recruits are all dead men. But don't let him scare you. <laughs> that's just his way. You seem nice. That's not so good round here. He's probably right. We probably are dead men. I mean, it's Game of Thrones. What's in these barrels? It's pitch. Dump it off the wall and it'll burn the wildlings down to their fucking bones. Um, that's gross. Huh. It's warm. Okay. Look at sparring crows. You fight like a girl. A wildling girl, maybe. Damn, y'all really don't like the wildlings, do you? I'm Jared Tuttle. I'm Gary Tuttle, nephew to Duncan Tuttle, Castellan of Ironrath. Garrett Tuttle of Ironrath. And how does a Castellan's nephew get himself sent to the wall? You're a thief, a raper. You abandon your post. I killed two men. Fancy dying someplace cold. I killed the men who murdered my family. Then you know how to fight, at least. And you're no liar, either. Sir? From Duncan Tuttle, Castellan of House Forester. My uncle wrote to the Night's Watch. He goes on for a bit, but then he asks us to make you a ranger. As if it's a knighthood. So you see, Tuttle, I know all about you. You are a killer. Even if you are man enough to own up to it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now then, we'll start your training in the morning. For today, you need a cot and a cloak. Understood. Oh, and Tuttle, sooner or later, the Night's Watch will be your death. When it comes, try to make it quick. I mean, I'll, I'll try. Don't know what the game's going to offer me. At least now I know it's Garrod, not Jared. It's like the whole Jeff Geth thing. And it's definitely Jeff. So I'm gonna stick with Jared. Just to piss people off. And last we'd heard, Asher was in Slaver's Bay. So Malcolm caught a ship headed for. I heard they took him off a corpse cart. 
and he's missing his arms and legs. <laughs> oh yeah, funny. At least he can still eat his shit. The good the white things in life. Soldiers are what drunk again, <laughs> and we have too few men to handle them. Let's just get to the great hall. Talia, why don't you get them in line? Get them fucking tell. Well, that's such a I Scottish see. thing to say. Get them tell. <laughs> Dressed up some peasant in his place. Fill me up, would you? And bring us some just staring at. while you're at it. Jeez. Fill yourself up, you lazy fuck. Is that him? Has to be, doesn't it? He's hideous. <laughs> Gee, thanks. Had a run in a with Walder cripple. Frey, did you? And he's leaning on a girl. Should have buried him with the corpses. Lean on a girl. That's my sister. Oh, real shame about your leg, oh, give us a toss. Don't let go of your sister now. I oh, won't well, think someone recognizes my sister at least. We have business in the Great Hall. <laughs> Go round. Move aside, soldier. Move aside, soldier. I'm quite comfortable, thank you. And I don't think you are gonna make me. Oh, is that right? Mr. trying to show off his manhood, polishing his sword. I wonder what's weaker. Your legs? Or this house? I'm the lord of this house. I am the lord of this house. And you will move. Go on then, my lord. handled that pretty well. I'm proud of myself. <laughs> we handled it well, but I'm proud of myself. I should say I'm proud of us, okay? Make it inclusive. <laughs> it's ridiculous. You're treating them like The guests. wine keeps their wits dull. It makes us look weak. Both of you, please. So you'd rather they riot? Duncan, you're a damn fool sometimes. It doesn't matter what you think. I was chosen as sentinel. My lords. Roderick, my boy, Mama, come join us, Lady Talia. You should have told us the Lord needed help. Talia's got this, okay. It's good. <clears throat> Good to see you awake, Lord Roderick. We didn't expect you so soon. The Maester said it would be weeks before you were walking, if you walked again at all. It was highly probable. Uh, let's get I to business. I thought we'd be up and about. I'm not here to talk about my elf. Perhaps we should get started. Yes, let's. Dali has told me the state of our house. Then you know our situation is grim, my lord. No thanks to your sentinel. He's been getting the White Hill soldiers drunk. It keeps them off their guard. They think you're a bloody fool. My lords, please. Oh, oh, I'm a fool. At least I was there by Ethan's side when Ramsay stole. I've told you. I was keeping an eye on the Bolton soldiers. You should have been protecting your lord. Now Ethan's dead, and Ryan a hostage. I will have order. Get him back. Nothing. I will have order. Of course. Apologies, my lord. The White Hills have my brother. We fight amongst ourselves, when we should be fighting them. We'd need an army to win that fight. And we don't have one. Then get me an army. Then find me one, Sir Ryland. That's no simple command, my lord. Most of our men fled after Lord Ethan was killed. And our allies are either dead or too afraid of the Boltons to help us. You forget the Glenmores. 
You'd be wed to Elena Glenmore already, if not for the war. And her father is no coward. Now that you've returned, the marriage can proceed as planned. The marriage? Well, much has changed. The Glenmores may no longer desire the union. What you trying to say? Lady Elena will decide for herself. Your betrothed is on her way here as we speak. Lady Elena? She's coming now! She mustn't see me like this. I'm not ready. My son, I understand your doubts, but if she still wishes to marry, we'd have the allies we so desperately need. Their army would become oath-bound to Roderick. And we could burn High Point to the fucking ground! Yes, this marriage could be our chance. Of course, we must hope Lady Elena still wants to marry Roderick. We're talking about a marriage, not an Ironwood contract. I'll convince her. I'm certain I can convince her. She's always been fond of you. Just be careful not to push Elena too hard. If Elena does come to Ironrath, she'll see those soldiers in the courtyard. We starve them out, and they'll have to leave. I'd rather they be lying around drunk than setting their stables on fire. My lord, perhaps you could put an end to this tiresome dispute. <sighs> Keep them drunk. Keep them drunk. It's better than inciting them to violence. Yes, my lord. Now, if there's nothing more to discuss. Maester, it's time to light the ironwood torches. Yes, my lady. Welcome back, my lord. It's got to be back. Gregor last lit these torches when his mother passed. Ironwood doesn't burn easily, he told me. But foresters have a way. And now we light them for him and Ethan. How is your song coming? Ethan always helped me with music. It's not the same without him. Would you like my help? I can help you with it. That's all right. The last time you sang, all the dogs in the kennel started howling. <laughs> But thank you. Everyone knows how much Ethan meant to you. I'm sure it will honor him well. About Elena, I've sent a letter to Mira. The Tyrells hold much influence over the Glenmores. I don't know where things stand between her and Lady Marjorie, but maybe your sister can find a way to help. I'm not sure. I'm not sure Marjorie is going to be able to help with this one. And this is where I'm going to wrap up this part here. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you're all having an amazing day and I love you all. Bye!